and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressions and lying against the Lord and departing from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And then the third theme, Redeemer of Zion. And that's um, chapter 59, verses 16 through 23. And so I'm just going to read verse 20. And it says, The Redeemer will come to Zion, and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. All right, so that's just kind of showing the progression of like how we got to <coughs> 60. So this is um, the um, verse that Miss Patty gave me. Um, chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. And it's arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and the deep darkness the people but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you the Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising so just showing like you know what I got from this it was you know God's redemption and you know how we go through that you know we have these times where you know, we were separated from God, you know, you know, we have done wrong, we've all done, been there, we confess our sins, God redeems us, and then God brings these people to us, you know, the, he puts the light, that's, you know, the candle, you know, that's the light that people see around us, like, even though we feel like, you know, we're, you know, we don't deserve it, and of course we don't, but, you know, like, that light is, is, is God's love shining through us, and so, like, even when we don't think that, you know, we are the ones that, you know, are, you know, capable of, you know, carrying this light, you know, like he is the light. And so like, um, you know, I have one of my favorite worship songs, it's The Wick by House Fires. But, you know, it's just talking about how we're, you know, um, God, the Holy Spirit comes and, you know, we're just a wick and he just lights us. And, you know, so, we, you know, it lights all around us. So, even in those things, you know, the Redeemer still keeps us, you know, to where we are, you know, lighting up the path around us. And I'm going to read that again in um, the New Living Translation and the Amplified. Okay. So it's arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. And then I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Arise from the depression and prostra prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Shine. <coughs> Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen on you. And nations shall come to your light, and the kings and kings to the brightness of your rising. And that's basically what I That's awesome. That's thank you for reading <laughs> that. Right. That's thank awesome. You. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Seriously. Thank you. Joanne, and she's going to be sharing um, Acts 2, 25 through 28. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Malika. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Did I miss what the candle was for? God's oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, there was so much there. I was like, I, I, I wait for the candle. I was like... <laughs> God to him, I saw the Lord constantly before me, for he is at my right hand, mm. that I may not be shaken or overthrown or cast down from my secure and happy state. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue exult exceedingly. Moreover, my flesh also will dwell in hope, will encamp, pitch its tent 
and dwell in hope in anticipation of the resurrection. For you will not abandon my soul, leaving it helpless in Hades, the state of departed spirit, mm -hmm. nor let your Holy One know decay or see destruction of the body after death. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will enrapture me, diffusing my soul with joy, with and in your presence. This is a um, prophetic scriptures spoken by David, and um, the Lord had given him these um, words hundreds of years back. And um, this is how um, Peter is reciting this on the day of Pentecost when the um, spirit came in and um, everybody was hearing the dialect, their own dialect from their own country. And he started witnessing to the people about the Jesus who was, who, whom they had allowed to be crucified. Um, when I, um, I had to keep reading it over and over because it's not that David is talking about himself, even though he said that for David says in regard to him, he's talking about the Lord, that he will not leave his soul, uh, uh, in, cause his soul to be left in Hades and be abandoned. He's talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. God gave him a prophetic view mm -hmm. of the future, yeah. of, G of the coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the whole thing about these um, scriptures is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So the age of salvation has come. The age of the spirit has come, and the age of the church has come. Mm. And um, when I, um, the first part says, David says in regard to him, I saw the Lord constantly before me. And when you think about that, um, it's so fittingly for the Lord to give that to David, mm. because David was always in the presence of the Lord. He, he was watching his father's sheep. Mm. And when Jesus talked about the Lord being constantly before him, he walked the earth with pure confidence, believing confidence, because he knew the Father was with him. He was before him, and he was at his right hand. And, and um, the, uh, I think about the scripture that says, um, 80, Psalm 84, 11, the Lord is my shield, and my son. Amen. And he has encamped all around me. Amen. David had the Lord always before him. Mm -hmm. He worshiped him with lyric and heart. Mm -hmm. God gave him so much confidence mm -hmm. that he killed a bear mm -hmm. and he killed a lion. And he when it came time for him, to, his father, to send him to give food to his brothers and to see Goliath come out against the, the, the Israelites, and he saw Goliath as this uncircumcised Philistine. And the fear that was only Israelites did not to, to go against him. But David, when he went before Saul, and Saul wanted to put, uh, put armor on him, he said, I can't wear this. I can't wear this. I'm not used to it. And he took those things off of him. And he went before Goliath. And Goliath said, am I a dog that you would send a boy to me? But David was more than a boy. Instead of him, he, he, the Israelites was hiding, but David ran to, the, to Goliath. He ran to the battle with sling and stone. And when he approached Goliath, he said, you come with me with sword, shield, and spear, but I come in the name yeah. of the Lord Amen. and the Father. Amen. God was his armor. Amen. God was before him. Amen. God was with him. And when he released the stone, I heard somebody say, I believe when David released that stone, that the hand of God took that stone. Mm -hmm. yeah. and hit oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, when I read these scriptures, I really loved, like it said, therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue exuded exceedingly more over, and my flesh also will hope 
I will encamp, pitch its tent, and dwell in hope and anticipation of the resurrection. And I came from Romans 8, 23 through 24, where they say, all creation groans, mm. waiting mm. For, the, the, for, for the coming of the Lord yeah. and the, 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 to be released yeah. from right. decay and destruction. Mm. And he said, even he, us, we groan within ourselves, waiting for the time to be released from these bodies. And, it's, and the word of God say, God want the, 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 those that, the sons of God to arise, mm. to arise. And for you will not abandon my soul, leaving me helpless and hate. Yeah. <coughs> Jesus rose with glory, with a glorified body. Mm -hmm. And he has given us that gift that when he read, the same spirit that raised Jesus Amen. from the dead will also quicken our bodies, Amen. will also raise us Amen. up, that we will meet him in the Hallelujah. air with, uh, with those that have died in before us, and that we will also receive glorified bodies. Amen. You have made Amen. known to me the ways of life. Mm. You will ever enrapture me, diffusing my soul with mm. joy, Amen. with and, and, and in your presence. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. And at his right hand, there are pleasures Amen. evermore. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. God, did, um, in Nehemiah, when they read this, uh, the, the word to the people, he Amen. said, go, don't grieve, don't be Amen. sad, rejoice in the Lord. Amen. We have a reason to rejoice. Oh and I want to go back up to the first part where say, David said um, about I saw the Lord constantly before me and how he ran to the battle. I remember the, um, this is a section in the Lord of the Rings. Yes. And when Gondor was <laughs> running from this monster <laughs> and, 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 and the dwarfs. And it was so, it, when they was running, and then all of a sudden Gondor stopped and said, wait a minute. He realized that he had power. Mm -hmm. And he turns around and he faced the enemy. Mm -hmm. And he says, you cannot pass. Yeah. And I'm telling you mm -hmm. that God has given us everything that pertains Amen. to life and godliness. Amen. That we are to stand with Amen. what we have been enraptured in. Amen. And say, you can't pass. Amen. You can't Amen. have my home. Amen. You can't have my children. Amen. You can't Ooh. have my neighborhood. It. When yes. I walk in my job, yes. the whole atmosphere changes. Amen. When I go in Walmart, Amen. the atmosphere changes. When I go to the bank, the atmosphere Ooh. changes. Send when it. I ride down yes. the road, I cancel everything. Amen. I, no accident or calamity Amen. will overtake me. Yes. You Amen. cannot Amen. pass. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. That was a full meal right there. That was so good. Awesome. You said those flamethrowers. I think she threw the flamethrowers. Yeah. Got that. That's awesome. That's right. Well, we got another flamethrower. That's right. We can start it. I'd like to introduce Aaron. He's going to be preaching on Isaiah 61. I know, right? <laughs> Good luck, buddy. And so, you know, I left my candle in the car. So <laughs> All right, friend. So we just gonna, we're just going to talk Great. the word. Is that okay? No, it's good. It's good. So, yeah, she, she did, she did indeed okay, okay. give me uh, Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. I'm going to read that in the King James Version first. Mm. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Amen. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach Amen. the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons of them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptance year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Mm. Now, I like the way that reads. But I like to read it in English. <laughs> but it really hits me real deeply when I read it through that. So first off, the spirit of the sovereign mm. Lord is mm. upon me. Mm. And first things first, I love that word sovereign. Yeah. Mm. Everybody understand that, hey, you know mm. God is in control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That none Amen. of this is a surprise to him. No Amen. circumstance. Oof. No circumstance. That is so good. No, no plague, no nothing. God mm -hmm. is in control. He knows what's happening. He's That's got right. a plan for it before it even starts. Mm -hmm. All right, so I like that. The Lord is the sovereign upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. 
He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to t tell those who <coughs> mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Amen. And with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. Amen. So that just ties into what sister said. You shall not pass. Mm. For the anger of the Lord is come. All right, so don't take heart. Be of good courage. Be of good yeah. cheer. Amen. Things are going to turn around. Amen. Hey, y'all, we win. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> right, so take it easy. Right. Yeah. Keep pressing. Keep going forward. So beginning of that verse, it says, again, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Mm. So if you do not know, that is coming from the prophet Isaiah, mm. who is uh, prophetically speaking on behalf of the Messiah. Amen. All right. So what he's saying is the Messiah, I, the Messiah, have been blessed and empowered mm. by God. That comes from this scripture. I'm going to reference this. I'm going to read it out loud. It's from Luke 4, 16 through 22. And it says, when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah, the prophet was handed to him. Mm. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the synagogue attendant, and sat down. Mm. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently, and he began to speak to them. The scripture you have just, just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Mm -hmm. Everyone spoke well of him and was amazed by the gracious words that came from his lips. But how can this be? They asked. Isn't that Joseph's son? <laughs> and so... Here he is in his hometown, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah, the Savior, the one they've been asking for. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm here. They didn't even recognize him. Mm -hmm. You know, he used to carpenter son. Mm -hmm. You know who this guy is. Who does he think he is? But Jesus coming here to fulfill and confirm that he indeed was the one mm -hmm. and that the spirit was the one that, that was going to be laid upon. So be, next, next part of the scripture, because the Lord has anointed me. The Messiah is indeed the Savior, the anointed one, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have Jesus Christ, right, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Well, yeah, duh, Jesus Christ is his last name, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, Christ is not his last name. Christ means the anointed one mm -hmm. and his anointing. Well, what does that mean? Oh, you know, someone put some oil on him, right? And he's all wiped down and good, right? It means the burden removing, yoke destroying power of Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Him. So that's who we're dealing with when we talk about Jesus. And then it says this too about this scripture references all the time, but here I found in the Old Testament, first sex, first Samuel two ten. Those who fight against the Lord will be shattered. Mm. He Oof. fights against them from the heavens. Oof. The Lord judges throughout the earth. He gives power to his kings, and here's the big part. He increases the strength of his anointed. One. Amen. That's our Jesus. We too have an anointing. But you we we but you are not like that for the holy one. Sorry, excuse me. This is from 1 John 2 20. But you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you his spirit and will allow you to know the truth. Mm. So we too, like Jesus, have the anointing. The Holy Spirit is within us. Mm. The power of God is directly placed on him. Now, what did he do this for? To bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the broken heart mm. and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be free. Mm. He sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. What is this, y'all? This is the ministry of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? This Amen. is what he came to do, to bring good news to the poor. Sinners, sin, death, that's everywhere. Mm. Every time you see someone who, look at the news. Everywhere, every time you turn, there it is, sin. We're here to preach. Jesus came to preach the good news of the gospel to the poor, those sick and dead mm -hmm. in sin. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be free. Mm -hmm. Who's under bondage? Mm -hmm. Then we just saying twice about anxiety and fear being gripped on people. Mm -hmm. The answer is Jesus. Mm -hmm. He sent me to, to those who mourn that the time, mourn that mourn. Someone <laughs> crying, who's hurting, who's grieving, who's got sorrow per permeating in their entire heart. That's what Christ came to do. Amen. This is the ministry of his. And of course, to talk about the anger of God that is coming for their en enemies. Oof. 
Do not get it twisted. God is not mocked. Yeah. He's not pleased with what he sees, and that's why he's raising up his church. That's why things are shifting. That's why things are changing, and that's why it's time to rise up in Christ. Yeah. But didn't, that's Jesus' ministry, but didn't he say we do more? Yeah. Mm. That's in John 14, 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same work I have done. And even greater because I'm going to be with the Father. Amen. So listen, IFC, we are here to do the ministry of Jesus. Amen. Everywhere we are, in our school, in school, at work, with children, in the Walmart, wherever you are, on social media, if you like to report yourself. Anytime you do something, you are doing it for Jesus. So I'm re reflecting on the sermon Pastor Nikki preached, and it just hit me hard. It kind of coincided with the previous message before, about deeper, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking like deeper love mm -hmm. for God, a deeper hunger, mm -hmm. more intimacy, relationship with the Father, mm -hmm. and deeper into your respective calling, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, walking in that with God. And then the previous message, he talked about you know, he says he always prays before the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. What does God want? What he wants instead of saying the cliche thing that everybody else is saying. He mentioned new sound, right? Mm -hmm. New sound, uh, different kind of prayer, mm -hmm. right? He, and then he said different kind of praise. But as he was saying that, I heard in my spirit, different kind of worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And isn't that funny? The very next week, what exactly do we go and do? Into mm -hmm. a different kind of worship, the, thing, the things that are for God. That, that hit me hard. I said, I, see, I remember a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Nikki said that, that worship is what we give God. That's his portion of the service. Mm -hmm. It's not like what we get. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, oh God, I thank you. I just feel your encouragement and I'm strengthened and I'm feeling good. Praise God. No. But that wasn't for him. No. no, what we were doing yesterday, when was that yesterday, Sunday? Sunday night. It's Monday, right? Tuesday? Yes, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Same, bad. Same. Yeah, I'm tired. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, new sound, a different kind of worship. And, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I was in heaven. I, mean, Amen. I was just like, man, oh, yeah. that song, Yeshua. Yeah. Now you want to get me going, just say Yeshua. Like mm -hmm. Jesus, would you say it in Aramaic? Or, yeah. Ooh, Yeshua. Yeah. And I just fell to my knees and just praised. Mm -hmm. And I could even see in my own heart, things were shifting. Mm -hmm. I am Monday morning, I went to the gym to go work out. As I'm winding up, you know, nobody feels like going in the morning, going to the gym. So I played some motivational something, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, you got to blankety blank the blank the blank. And I'm like, <laughs> I said, no, I, nah, right? I said, let me find something more tame. And I found this other dude, and he's like, yeah, man, you gotta put what's inside your mind and create your own reality. I said, oh Lord, new age and new thought. <laughs> I said, oh no. So, you won't believe this. I am not trying to be spooky, super spiritual, over biblical, but I kid you not. I'm in the gym doing squats to Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I kid you not, I really am. Yeah. And it just blessed my soul. I felt power, felt strength because God is shifting us. Amen. You know, he's Amen. shifting the remnant. Amen. It's going crazy, but we're going to rise up. That's why those things are shaking up over there in Asbury. Mm -hmm. and that's why Pastor Nikki was saying, just speak the fire. Ask God Hallelujah. to rain the fire right here. Amen. And it will. And it'll Amen. rain fire. It's going to rain fire at my job. It's going to rain fire in 20. It's going to rain fire over there on where Pillion and Lexington. We're all here. <laughs> so ultimately, we can just see the reign of God is coming. That's what we're here for. That's what we're focused on. So God, take us deeper. Yeah. Amen. Amen. church has been sleeping yes yes and it's been lying dormant mm -hmm. and not raising up and raising his um voice that now all of a sudden there's a stirring mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> a scary, and um and, and and there's a push to make us uncomfortable yeah. 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 so to 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 wake up and and because um the church has um because I, I i can speak for myself and others that i know has been like almost like zombie-like mm -hmm. and, and weary mm -hmm. yeah. and tired mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and it's like, you know, you, you come and like, I <clears> push it, <throat> you know, how, how long is it going to be so we can go or whatever, even though things are good, but because you can sit, be in a good, godly atmosphere and just like he say, 
and not recognize that God is there, right. or be there, uh, or be there, and 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 um and the spirit is not there, and you don't Think know which one, what, which is worse. But I think right now we're in the um in the air in the season where God is shaking. Hallelujah. It's, that there's a shaking and a shifting, and the, uh, the church has to wake up and it takes something to do it and he's using young people mm -hmm. to do it Amen. Yeah. he's using young people to wake up the church mm -hmm. to wake up the body of christ Hallelujah. and um and they're coming and they're coming with such fire <clears throat> and such boldness mm -hmm. and and not um, willing to to stand for anything or or and as and I like when we was here Sunday night and he said you can walk around there was noise and that's what he need he need us to make noise the church has been silent for too long and one thing I have to say too when we in the world. You raise hell, you act fool, you act silly, you oh, yeah. act crazy, you do all kinds of crazy things. But then, y'all yeah, did say that. But, <laughs> but then when you come in Christ, you get silent and quiet. Yeah. Mm. God needs that, 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 that rambunciousness That's right. in the church. He no needs man, that no rambunciousness. He don't need for us to sit down and That's be right. quiet. He That's need right. that rambunciousness. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to quote her to the pastor. Yeah. Thank you. So this is what we're going to do next Sunday. Yeah. Right. Go right go right go right <laughs> oh, I'm going to raise heaven. Amen. Amen. You know, there was this prophet, Bob Jones. I don't know if any of y'all ever heard of him. Yeah. Um, he was around for a long time. And I read a thing today, and he had prophesied. He said, there will be earthquakes, and then God is going to move. Mm -hmm. And I've been watching. I told Ralph yesterday I watched all the uh, people trying to retrieve people out of the horrible mm -hmm. earthquakes in Turkey. Yeah. And then I'd go down a little bit farther, and there'd be something about Ashbury. Mm. It was like this and this, this and this. It was absolutely incredible. Mm. Paul Kane had had um, prophetic words about this time that we're living in. And it's exciting because, you know, Ralph and I, we had a banner in 1994. It was a... Right, 94. It was one a, of those... It um, was a, it's an interstate boulevard uh, sign right as you enter Columbia. It's one of the big signs up in the air. About revival, yeah, you know, that repent. Our, that was our family but, ministry to the yeah. city. Mm -hmm. Bought and, um, the whole thing for twelve months. But we've had revival in our hearts for years, and yeah. you know, we didn't know if we'd be old enough or we'd be here when it happened. And I'm thinking, wow, God, this is awesome. Yeah. And how many little quakes have we had around here? Oh right? yeah, a lot I mean, of there's been a lot of little quakes. A yeah. lot of them. You know what I really appreciate? I was sharing this with my father and mom. Was it Sunday when we did that, boys? That everybody knows about Asbury and what's going on there, right? But what I love is like the devil can't silence it. <laughs> right. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. Everybody's seeing it. If you remember back in 2020, Jonathan Khan, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he had a revival with millions of Christians meeting in D.C. Crickets. Silence. Mm -hmm. They didn't even mention it at all. They tried to hide it. You know, they can't stop it, so they try to hide it. Mm -hmm. That's what they, my, they, my dad always taught me that. See, the devil, he starts with, stop him. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you get to a place he can't stop you. Hide him. <laughs> <laughs> right? He wants you not to pay it. He'll say, like, uh, someone you're watching, a televangelist, mm -hmm. and you have, you yeah, just turn the channel. Okay, I'll just turn the channel. Like, you want to let you come in. But the devil cannot stop. What God is making happen. Right. Mm -hmm. He's like you said, letting the college people, letting them see and just worship God. No fancy gimmick, no promise of a blessing, just God. And people are just running. Remember you watched that video? People just in line. And the thing that I see like you said, it's New York. Oh, David Wilkerson. Yeah. They want to record. They want to record. They want to record. Instagram. Yes, and um, you, you didn't hear a lot. You heard about only when they interviewed him. You didn't hear a lot about. But he, he had a, a, a very good revival going on. And it's like you say, you, it, it's just, it's ticked Asbury. 
to to take a bow storm. Yeah. And, yeah. Because New York is doing one too. They had one in Times mm -hmm. Square, and it was all on the teeth on the, you know those teeth big screens. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. They just had open like it looked like New Year's Eve, like wow. just open worship in New York. Like a popular yeah. band, gospel band, band. I can't, I don't remember what it was. And it was just doing worship, and people was just out there worshiping, mm. and just millions was coming out there worshiping. I said, God is shaking up something. Yeah. I said, when in San Francisco, people are tired now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can come in any minute. Yeah, yeah. 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 you want to worship? We gonna show you how Ooh, we worship. Jesus, yeah. God. Yeah. God. You know, several of you have said about cost, and I, I'm, I'm reflecting <laughs> back. The uh, Patty and I were able to go a couple of times down to uh, Florida for the revival um, Brownsville, Brownsville. Mm -hmm. and the pastor said often he said oh, uh, no. you're enjoying and you're mm -hmm. being blessed by what we've paid two years price mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and he said we oh, were here every day yeah. praying yeah. for two years for God mm -hmm. to move wow. and uh, that's expensive. Yeah, it is. I mean, you talk about inconvenience. He yeah. said, you all don't even understand how inconvenient mm -hmm. it was. People would come Besides from the their, their, their office and not go home and eat, and they would come here and pray all night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think several of you have said, you know, God's, um, it, it's, this, is, this is a time where uh, he's shaking us out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and it's so true. Suppose that this part of... Um, Pastor Nikki telling us about going deeper, mm -hmm. the, the sacrifice of, of coming mm -hmm. in more, mm -hmm. even when there's not a scheduled life group for a church service. Right. And just, he said if there's no worship without sacrifice, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. without fearing the Lord, mm -hmm. without bowing down. Mm -hmm. right there was sacrifice. one place, that there was a move of God, and um, I think it was the elders of the church took the pastor aside and said, this place is a mess. They, they're bringing in gum, they're dropping it on the floor, they spill their coffee. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, the so, it's the original pastor of Calvary Chapel. I forget so, his name, but he, Chuck, yeah. Yeah. So the pastor, Chuck, Chuck Smith. Yeah, so he said, okay. So the next Sunday they came, all the carpet had been ripped up, <laughs> and it was just bare cement floors. They said, they can bring what they want. Now, yeah. now, now they're not you gonna know. ruin the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. It gone. Yeah, yeah, it was gone. He just ripped it up, and I'm thinking, wow, wow that's like, Awesome. It was funny two weeks ago uh, after worship, I went to go get a cup of coffee out of the kitchen because like, you know, like if you're busy and uh, Pastor Nikki had locked the kitchen and changed the door code. And I was like, yes, because a lot of times people will congregate out there, you know, and it's just like he, he stopped it. And I was like, yes. so I got a cup of water and came in. I was like, I see what you do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need coffee anyway. When I was in uh, New Jersey, I lived in New Jersey with my sister. And the church I was going to in Wall, which is right around Belmar and Asbury Park and stuff like that, started, a uh, revival started there. And it lasted for seven weeks. Every night we went to church. Mm. People were flying in, speaking. It was young people. They were flying in, speaking and everything. And the Lord kept saying he was holding something back. Mm. He was holding something back, didn't finish what he wanted to do. And we just carried on and carried on and carried on. And then after seven weeks, it just kind of died down. Mm. And that's oh, when the planes hit yeah. the World Trade Center. Mm. So I'm not trying to say anything, but when we have revival, it's like it's a time for us to really get serious and get mm -hmm. get yeah. the voice of the Lord of what mm -hmm. what He's saying mm -hmm. about what might be coming upon the earth later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. That's good. Um, I, I thought as we were driving over here, our our monthly. I hate to use the word pattern, but our monthly gatherings, uh, we want to see more engagement by the people like we did tonight in terms of having you all bring a, a short mm -hmm. word, stirring your brothers and sisters. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly still have uh, uh, the, last, the last Tuesday, we'll 
and next week is our food. gathering for food. Mm -hmm. Did you notice the first person that said food? <laughs> I mean, so, I, it was so much. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's, I'm not going to miss that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's a that's a time of gathering and engaging and just loving on each other mm -hmm. and just, you know, getting deeper in relationship. That's yeah. the purpose of that. Yeah. And worship and and. Uh, but I, I I wanted to present the possibility of. Maybe the next few months, um, and I know we could do something really radical and come in here every night of the week, but I'm just mm -hmm. going to ask, how would you all feel that perhaps we took one Tuesday night and we primarily one. did worship and focused on intercession for no, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. For, yeah. for, for, for the yeah. nation, yeah. Yeah. for the church, mm -hmm. just not there'd be no teaching or anything. It'd be right. to have some mm -hmm. encouraging worship, and yeah. then boom, yeah. and yeah. just spend uh, you know 45 minutes just in intense prayer and we could mm -hmm. pray in groups we could pray right. yeah. one after another you know we mm, could hey we could walk around we yeah. could make noise <laughs> yeah. but uh, i've just as we were driving over here I, I, I just was really feeling as a as a life group it would really i think it would be great for us to unite yeah. our voices in the focus of revival the Amen. focus of of, uh, you know, God do it here at IFC. I've been praying for the University of South Carolina this week. I said, God, there's two places I've been praying. CIU, yes. Columbia International University. God, Amen. blow up that place with revival. Yeah, that's right. that, that, Hallelujah. That, you, you all yeah. may not know this. Yeah. Patty and I have known of CIU. We've been engaged with people at CIU since the early 80s. Mm -hmm. That that place has <laughs> has sent missionaries all over the world. That is a, and, and we often said, that's a jewel that is in this city. Most people in the city don't even know that it exists. Right. And that if they do, they don't know what, what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So I, I was really praying this last number, number of days for God to really just seize the CIU. Dynamite. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and then I've been praying for the University of South Carolina that God would erupt that in a secular university. Mm -hmm. I love what he's doing in the Christian colleges. Mm -hmm. Let it break out into That's the right. secular universities yeah. with a group yeah. of Christians. There's some there's some good ministries on campus at uh, at at, at uh, USC. There are some mm -hmm. some good solid ministries that are reaching the, the young people over there. But perhaps we'll do a night a Tuesday night of just intense worship. I mean intense. Uh, uh, intercession as a group and there's I think we're going to see this beginning as Joanne just uh, indicated we might see more of this more spontaneously even within the church mm -hmm. somebody says hey I'm gathering some folks tomorrow night on the you know down here for worship or something so keep your ears open on that um, another thing that is in the near future uh, Charles and I and and uh, um, Scott have engaged with a lady that's been doing ministry under the bridge on the way in 70, uh, two, uh, excuse me, I-, I uh, I-76. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you come into Columbia and UG Street takes off here, you go over a bridge. And uh, some of you know, I know Malika has gone with Charles and Kathy to, Char to Charlotte and some other places, uh, one of, one of Charles's family members, a brother-in-law or something, hosts these things, meet you at the bridge. Mm. And so that's a, that's a time of trying to engage uh, the homeless and those in the area of downtown and stuff. And I had mentioned to Charles that that, that bridge was possibly available. And uh, I'm doing, I have to, to get in contact with, a lady got in contact with me, and I'm working with her right now. And as I'm talking to her, about her thing, she, I don't know what happened. She started talking about her ministry of the homeless. And she said, you know, sometimes I just make all of this food and I put it in this Coleman uh, big uh, cooler and I take it down under the bridge. And I said, where? She said, I'm under the, you know, it's under the bridge. Yeah, she said, and I take all of this food down there, cooked food, and they never, she said, they come and they, they eat it. And they, and they always leave my cooler clean <laughs> and my utensils. She said oh, that nothing's wow. ever. Wow. So we've engaged her, and we're going to see if we can 
opened the door up for a ministry under the bridge in I Columbia. just heard that on KLO Did you? radio. About the that it's called uh, this man has this ministry and it's called You've Got a Name. And he started making sandwiches and stuff and taking it and, and would learn their name. So he, it was Very like good. a personal thing because yes. yes. they, they usually congregate at the same place. Mm -hmm. And the whole ministry is you have a name. That's cool. I, I, recently I heard, heard something about that as well as ministering to homeless is one thing, but when you actually engage them and know their names, it completely changes the dynamics yes. of it. Yeah. So just, just pray about that. We're not quite sure how that's going to mm -hmm. unfold, but I think that in the next couple of months, we might find that there's a, an opportunity to do the, what Charles and them have been doing in other cities. We may be able to do right here in Columbia under the bridge. So the next time you drive over that bridge, just pray for the Lord, open the door for it, because we, we need to check with the city and a lot of other things. But that, that looks like it's coming. So. I want to bring up a prayer point yes. that Vicki had brought, brought out yesterday about praying for Hobby Lobby that they be sued. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know that. Um, Vicki, you'll share what you. They having a hard time. Somebody was talking about it at my job, and and they was like disagreeing with Hobby Lobby. It was a um, that they they said that in their insurance. Well, when they give insurance, they're not gonna um, give insurance for people who are going through trans you know transgenders who come out want to have a baby come on mm -hmm. um, maternity leaves, and um, I think it was also to help with abortions and all that kind of stuff. Basically stuff that's going out of God's right. you know, will of God. Yeah. And so they're trying to fight them mm. about that. So And all that happens and so then fast. And to change, mm -hmm. you know, wanting the insurance to cover all this, yeah. all these yeah. different things. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, we ain't, like we ain't three putting years that ago. in our yeah. insurance. You, you're going to get the basics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Bible anyway, basics. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so he's like, okay, we're gonna try to. So they're trying to make a big deal for them. Okay. I want to share something. They have nothing to do with that, but it has some. Um, there's a, a ministry, a, a pastor in California, Greg Lawley, mm -hmm. who yes. um, has a movie coming out called The Jesus Revolution. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and it's a Tuesday, I'm on the 22nd and the 24th. They'll be filming it. I think it come out 714 is the actual day come out, but on the 22nd it'll be viewing at the movie theaters here and um, on the 24th it'll be viewing. And I think the 24th is the one where it actually um, invite people to come to Christ. So. Is it Mark? I'm praying. Hmm? Mark? Mark? Is this no, this is this is the 22nd of February and the 22nd and the 24th of February. And now is it certain theaters? Yes. So how do you find out which theater it's at? Because I want to see it. Uh, somebody look it up on the. Yeah, it's, I think it's in Hurst. I think it's going to happen in Hurst in the Actually, I've got something. Um, Brooke Lidgerwood from. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's on tour, the Seven Tour, with David Funk from Bethel and Alyssa Smith from Upper Room. And I'm going to be in Tampa on the 17th of March, but she's also going to be in Jacksonville on the 16th of March. I was hoping to do both of them, but like I, I got to pick one or the other. So um, it's super cheap. It's like 40 bucks. So if you guys want to have like a, a shuttle, like going down to Jacksonville, like it's it's Brooke, Frazier, Lidgerwood, however you say that. And then Alyssa Smith from Upper Room. And then like David Funk from, and then I think uh, just, anyway, seven. Just, it's seven tour, Brooke, Frazier. So um, it's super cheap. So I thought that'd be kind of fun for like a carpool thing. That's, that's in March. March 16th, it's going to be in Jacksonville, and 17th, it's going to be in Tampa. And I've got a business thing going on in Tampa, so I can't make it to the Jacksonville one. But um, I'll be in Tampa if you guys want to come to that one. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Well, 